Last year, I was in an accident. There was a traffic jam and I was stuck for 20 minutes. I decided it was a good time to bring on my iPad, so I took it off my seatbelt and leaned into the back seat to get it from my gym bag. Seconds later, a car rear-ended me at 65 miles per hour. I smashed my head into the dashboard so hard that it was like turning off a light. It took 13 hours of surgery, 5 weeks in a coma and 8 months of physical therapy to get me back on my feet. On paper, that's the end of the story, but there's more to tell. I brought something back from the coma. It is so hard to describe my experience. You completely lose track of time, so a passing thought can take an instant or an afternoon. There is no way to tell. You can be completely aware of everything that happens around you, and yet you can't recall anything anyone has said. You can become hyper-focused on a smell in a particular part of the room, but don't feel a single thing when someone gives you a shot or stretches your legs. It is like floating in an empty black room, with twinkling stars of cohesive thought floating just out of reach. I could have been alone for mere minutes or weeks before I finally met him. There is no way to tell. But there was someone there to keep me company. There, in the void. I first heard him as a distant voice, calling out to me. There was something inside me telling me to keep my mouth shut, but I just couldn't. I was scared and alone. I answered the call. The first time I saw him, in my mind's eye, he was tall, probably about a head taller than me. He was thin, hairless, and completely nude. He seemed tired. We could barely understand each other, as if we spoke different languages. Still, he stayed with me, occupying my thoughts. After a while, we started to sound alike. We started having conversations, we started making jokes, telling stories and getting to know each other. Again, it could have been minutes, it could have been weeks, and I don't remember anything about it. There was just the sensation of having him there, of having company in the nothingness. Still, a few of his words stood out. I'm nobody, he said once. In so many ways, I'm nobody, and sometimes, you are too. So that's what I called him, the nobody. As time passed, I realized I made a mistake. As my body struggled to wake up, the nobody tried his best to keep me around for just a little longer. He wanted a friend and a companion in the dark, someone to get to know and share his experiences with. I don't remember what he told me, but I remember how it made me feel. It made me feel dread and existential terror, like there was something I desperately wanted to forget, something I wish I didn't know. Luckily, I don't remember it, thank God. But the nobody wanted me to know. He kept telling me these awful things, as if to make me sympathetic to his state of being. He wanted me to give up and just stay there, with him, but I wouldn't budge. I was determined to wake up and put this entire thing behind me for however many years I had left to live. He got frustrated, and with every frustration he changed his form. His fingers would grow longer, his arms thinner, his head would grow pale and elongated, his mouth rounder like a leech. On the good days, He'd look like himself. On the bad days, I had to hide, listening to him trying to sense my thoughts in the dark. But the day when I could finally feel my body again, the stars in that empty void were turning into suns, and blotches of thought were connecting. A finger connected to a hand, connected to an arm, eyes twisting and turning, trying to blink. In the final moments of my coma, I struggled so hard that my entire being was screaming the effort into the void. 
I'd either wake up or stay there forever. All or nothing. At first, I was failing, falling deeper into the void. Then, a surge. The nobody lifted me up and carried me into the light of thought. I woke up. Those five weeks just seemed like a murky memory, an afterthought. Something I've left behind, but not quite forgotten. I still have certain memories left, clear as day, but none of them as vivid as that of the nobody. If I had artistic talent, I could paint him from memory. I could spot him in a crowd of a hundred people. I could have heard a single word in a crowded room, and I'd recognize his voice. To me, he was at the front of my memory. Still is. During my physical therapy, I brought it up with my nurse. She didn't laugh at me, but didn't take it very seriously either. People have all kinds of experiences, she argued. Some come back speaking different languages or thinking they're someone else. To you, it was all real. But here in the real world, it is not. You are you, and there is no one else. You try to find comfort in that. Of course, I tried, but I couldn't. It started with sleepwalking. Not much and not far, but enough to make me worried. I live alone, and waking up standing in the middle of a cold shower is not something I'd ever recommend. Or waking up with your mouth full of olives, choking on a kernel. I just figured it was a result of my brain damage. I told my doctor about it, but they didn't pay too much attention. They were more worried about signs of fatigue and dizziness. Still, my memory of the nobody was so vivid, I could imagine myself seeing him. I often got the feeling that he was right behind me. If I just turned around quick enough, I'd enter a dark room, knowing he was there, making me afraid to turn on the lights. I would stare at an empty space, knowing that he would appear if I wasn't vigilant enough. I expected him at every turn, at every corner. He was real, but I also knew that there was no way he could be. Then there was an incident. It wasn't bad, but it looked bad. I was at a coffee shop, ordering a latte and a bun, when I suddenly fainted. Bang. Lights out. I don't have any memory of what happened, but people in the coffee shop had freaked out. The ambulance came. Two people were propping my head up with their jackets. They checked my pulse and breathing, and I was fine. I was just, you know, lights out. The tests were inconclusive. Sure, there were some inconsistencies, but none of them were out of the ordinary. I had been in a coma for weeks and only just recently started my physical therapy. There were sure to be readings that were out of the ordinary. So I got back home with a fairly decent bill of health. There was only one thing that bothered me. They had gotten my height wrong. I am a solid 5'9", but according to the tests I was at least 6'1". I had also lost no less than 12 pounds since my last checkup. At first, I thought it was in my head. My fingers were starting to look longer. I was losing a bit of my complexion. I made excuses for all of it. I never go outside, I'd say. It's just the weight loss making me taller. But it wasn't that simple. The next few nights proved that. The sleepwalking got worse. The final straw was waking up in front of the bathroom mirror with the words... Nobody loves you, written in blood. I'd shaved my head and brushed my teeth so violently my mouth tasted raw flesh. I wasn't even pale anymore. I was pallid. Of course the nobody loves me. I was his only friend in that place between worlds. That hollow, dark place. Over the upcoming weeks, the changes would become more obvious. I'd grow another two inches, 
and lose another 20 pounds. My hair didn't grow back, and I lost hair in other places as well. I was having trouble with my teeth, and I was getting these violent coughs. My rib cage was aching from the coughing, and I got a prescription for asthma medication. It didn't help. I barely recognize myself in the mirror anymore. I'm starting to look like him. Sometimes I'd hear him, just as I fell asleep. That bump in the night had a voice, thanking me for bringing him along. In the next breath, he'd praise himself for saving me. Nobody helped you, the voice would say. Nobody got you here. Six months into my physical therapy, I was barely recognizable. A thin membrane had grown in my throat, effectively separating my voice into two pipes, one light, one dark, which spoke simultaneously. The doctor had a fancy word for it, and we tried to schedule surgery for it, but my insurance wouldn't cover it. It was the kind of condition one does not simply get but something you just have. Hence, I couldn't have gotten it as a result of the accident. It had to be pre-existing, even though it wasn't. They said the same thing about my fingers. Fingers don't just grow. I could literally show the growth measure from day to day, but it didn't matter. My canines also grew longer. They'd poke a hole in my bottom lip at night, not that I'd sleep much anyway. I was always tired. I dread going to sleep, so I started relying on sleeping pills. At best, I'd have a dreamless night that lasted four hours or less. At worst, I'd be twisting and turning in a cold sweat for 14 hours straight. Night and day float together when you live that kind of life. And sometimes, he'd come visit me. The nobody. I'd feel his presence lying there next to me, sometimes thanking me, sometimes praising himself. Except now, we had the same voice, the same double piped voice, making us sound like two people speaking at once in a gruesome vibrato. Twins. One night, as I brushed my teeth, I saw him in the mirror. I could feel my face twisting and turning at his whim. We were having a conversation wide awake through my body. He, smiling at me through a face I barely recognized as my own. I'll stop, he made me say. I want you to be comfortable. Leave me alone, I'd say, in a different tone. Just leave me. No, I laughed. We're out. We're free. Just listen to me, and it will all be fine. It was the second time I should have ignored him. The second time he called out to me. But I was too tired. I listened. At first, his demand seemed reasonable. He had different dietary restrictions, different things he liked. As long as I kept him happy... He allowed me to sleep, and my changes didn't progress. My canines even shrunk a bit. It was small things, like drinking milk instead of water, eating ham instead of cheese, going to bed at the break of dawn instead of sunset. Little things, but they added up fast. Soon, he didn't even have to ask me to do it. I'd just do it. Then, it got worse. He'd want me to take long midnight walks, to stay inside during the day, to turn off the lights and put bed covers over the windows, to eat a raw chicken breast, to eat charcoal, to eat cockroaches, flies, and worms, to sleep in an ice-filled tub curled up in a ball. Step by step, I did all of it. I barely even noticed the changes. I was growing isolated from friends and family, who barely recognized me. I had grown a third windpipe, and there'd be bones poking out from the side of my ribcage. 
My yawns would reveal a mouth twice the size of what I used to have. I tried going back to the doctor, but I heard the nobody scream in the back of my head. I had just gotten off the bus when I stopped. I'll bite your tongue off. I'll chew it. Swallow it. You'll taste your own stomach acid if you don't turn back home. I listened. I tried not to, but I did. I'm writing this because I don't know where this will all end. My physical therapy came to an abrupt end. I can't go back to work. I can't go to my family. He doesn't allow it. Instead, he's giving me strange instructions. Addresses I've never been to. Names of people I've never met. He's having me read articles about distant places. About events that happen to other people. Not even big news or anything. Just very specific things. An apartment fire in Minnesota, for example. Who cares? And that's the weirdest thing. I care. I really, honestly care. I'm excited to do these things. To adapt. I feel stronger and more connected to myself with every submission. I like the taste of the things I eat. I sleep better in the places he makes me stay. And yet, I know that isn't me. Not the real me. This, right here, this is the real me. These words might be the last part of what it means to actually be me. I don't want to lose myself completely, but I know better than to torture myself against an inevitable conclusion. The nobody whispered truths about what we are and what we mean for weeks. He told me the way things really are and what it means to be human. And honestly, I'm not a fan anymore. <laughs>